Become the best version of yourself How to transform your life and claim your personal power being yourself. Projecting yourself. What triggers you? From the time we are born, many will be educated to be a version of themselves that please others. Whether it comes from the way you were raised or how you were taught in school, we often learn to put a mask on and be an actor in our life. Unfortunately, that behavior will not lead you to be happy and live a fulfilling life. You can discover the best version of yourself and transform your life so that you are no longer an actor in your life. Choose to live the life that was made for you. In this video, you will have to commit to exploring yourself, try to be aware of your behaviors, and be honest with yourself. This video is for you, and no one other than yourself can know who you are. With commitment, vulnerability, and curiosity, you will be able to be the best version of yourself and put away the mask that you've to wear for much too long. Are you ready to claim your power? Then let's start to explore your current life and see how much you are currently your true self. The power you have is to be the best version of yourself you can be so that you can create a better world. The first step is being yourself the best version of yourself is being true to yourself, but what does this mean? It is sometimes easier to explain something by identifying what it isn't. That said, here's a list of what is not being the best version of yourself, being true to yourself is not about pleasing others, being true to yourself is not about hurting others, being true to yourself is not about doing things you dislike, being true to yourself is not about forcing yourself to do something, being true to yourself is not about being hard on yourself, being true to yourself is not about judging others and comparing yourself, being true to yourself is not about being a victim of your surroundings, being true to yourself is not about acting in a way that will attract more fans on social media. Being true to yourself means that you behave and communicate in complete integrity with your belief, values, and, most of all, with what feels right in your heart. When there is an alignment with your inner self, emotions, states, and desires, and outer self, behaviors, communication, and relationships, you are the best version of yourself. Assessing yourself, have you ever felt like your behavior and the way that you held yourself varied depending on who is around you and where you are? We tend to play a different role when we are with individuals that we want to please or want to make sure that they like us. For example, you might behave in a completely different way if you are at work or with people you just met and want to be friends with them. We tend to be ourselves when we are at home or with childhood friends. That is when we let our guards down and become more vulnerable and less worried about how others might perceive us. The following questions will help you identify which area of your life you are the best version of yourself. The answer is yes or no, pick the answer the closest to how you feel, mostly yes or mostly no. In your business, career and professional world are you satisfied with your work? Do you get along with your colleagues? Do you know what you want to do for work? Are you comfortable with your knowledge and skills? Do you feel you are contributing to the world in a way that fulfills you? Are you happy in your career? Given the opportunity to change work, would you still stay in your job? Total yes and no. About love and romantic relationship are you experiencing happiness in love? Do you feel like you can be yourself in a love relationship? Do you feel loved for who you truly are? Do you feel your partner knows you very well? Are your needs mostly met in your love relationship? Is it easy for you to understand your partner? Are you healthily independent in your love relationship? Total yes and no. Questions on your family, are you close to your family? Do you feel like you have a connection with your family? Can you be yourself around your family? Do you mostly experience positive emotions around your family? Is being with your family where you feel like you are truly yourself? Do you feel supported by your family? Can you count on your family when you need help? Total yes and no. About your friends, do you have a close bond with your friends? Do you trust your friends? Would you say that the level of give and take in your friendship is balanced between you and them? Do you feel like you can be yourself with all your friends? Do you have healthy boundaries with your friends? Do you feel comfortable saying no to your friends? Are you honest with your friends? Total yes and no. How about your acquaintances and neighbors? Are you honest with people you meet for the first time? Do you stay true to yourself when you meet new people? Meaning you don't change your demeanor. Are you honest with yourself when you meet someone new that you don't like? 
meaning you don't try to convince yourself that you need to give them a chance. Are you the type of person that will say no to an offer to go out if you don't feel like hanging out with that person? When you meet someone, do you immediately know if you will get along with them or not? Are you able to distance yourself from a person when you are not interested in their friendship? Are you comfortable expressing your thoughts with unfamiliar people? Total yes and no. About yourself, are you comfortable in your own skin? Do you appreciate your physical body? Would you say you have healthy self-talk? Are you comfortable with compliments from others? Is it easy for you to accept help from others? Do you appreciate spending time by yourself? Could you list 10 qualities about yourself right now? Total yes and no. Compile all the yes and no from each section. Total, the more yes you have, the easier it is for you to be yourself. The goal is to be your true self in all spheres of your life. Based on that quick survey, which area of your life has more no? Keep that in mind, we hope that by the end of reading this book, you are more comfortable being yourself in that area of your life. Every decision you make reflects your evaluation of who you are. The second step is projecting yourself, some of the questions in the previous chapter might not make sense to you. For example, we asked if you are the type of person that will say no to an offer to go out if you don't feel like hanging out with that person. If it is hard for you to say no to others and instead of saying no, you use white lies, which means that you are also able to tell yourself white lies. Being dishonest is one of the most common mistakes we make in life that keeps the best version of ourselves at bay. It takes a long time to realize that the external world is a projection of what is happening internally. Since the external world is a pure reflection of us, it can give us a lot of information about ourselves when we take the time to observe and be aware. For example, if you hate your job, it could be a sign that you technically don't recognize your skills and abilities. That you are unable to clearly see what you are capable of and therefore settle for jobs that you dislike. It's almost like you are creating your own misery. Take a moment to list some of the things that you dislike in your environment. That could be the way that your romantic partner treats you, the way that your family makes you feel about yourself or your professional life. Write this in a piece of paper, and honestly answer it, after you watched this video, if I could change something about my life, it would be the following. Now that you've listed a few things you would like to change about your life. Let's reflect on what this means regarding yourself. Here are a few examples of what the projection could potentially be. External projection, my romantic partner doesn't give me enough attention. Internal reality, I am struggling to provide myself with love and care. External projection, my friends don't listen to me or don't want to hear from me, it's always about them. Internal reality, I tend to forget about my needs and always try to please others. I have a hard time putting myself as a priority. External projection, I'm still stuck doing stuff that I don't like. It seems to always be like that. Why can't others do the things I like? Internal reality, I am unable to say no and have not created healthy boundaries with others. I am not able to respect myself. External projection, I've always hated my jobs and can't seem to find what I want to do in my career. Internal reality, I am unable to see my skills and abilities. I tend to be hard on myself. I'm never good enough. External projection, when I'm on social media, I want people to like my post. I can take 100s of pictures before I get to the perfect one to share on my social media. Internal reality, I perceive myself as not enough, and I feel I need to be perfect to be loved. I don't accept myself for who I am. I need the approval of others to like myself. External projection, every romantic partner I had, I did everything they wanted and always tried to please them, but they never gave the same amount of effort in the relationship. Why is it that I can't get what I offer? Internal reality, I believe that I cannot be loved for myself. Therefore, I have to be another person to be liked. I have to act in a certain way to receive love. Now, your turn to dig deep and find what your external world is telling you about your internal reality. What have you learned about yourself in that activity? Are there aspects of you that you want to work on? Are there some projections that you would like to address and end the cycle in your life? In the third step, we will look at things that make you reactive. Reactivity is often another aspect that needs our awareness. 
When we learn our triggers, we learn about our true selves and what needs to heal within to be the best version of ourselves. You don't see the world as it is, you see it according to who you are. Third step, learning your triggers. Are there some subjects that you avoid discussing with others because you know you will be angry or frustrated? Do you sometimes find yourself easily offended by others? Learning your triggers will help you to move from being reactive to being at peace with what others think when it is different from your opinion. When we are triggered by something external to us, we tend to blame others for what we are experiencing. Blaming others for our state of mind and situation is living a victim mindset. The faster you can learn to stop reacting to others, the faster your mindset will shift to be more in alignment with your true self. First, you have to accept that the only things you can change in this world are your behavior, your mindset, and your communication style. As you probably know by now, you have no control over other people's behavior or mind. Make a decision now that you will no longer blame your problems on external factors. Second, learn to be aware of your behavior and thoughts, especially when you go in that space of blaming others or reacting to what they do or say. Start by making a list of what you feel trigger you. I tend to react emotionally to the following, some examples could be politics, injustice, self-centered people, incompetence, etc. Try to be as specific as possible by using an example to explain the trigger. Now make a plan to react differently in the future when those situations or subjects arise. How will you better handle your emotions in these situations? Another approach to this would be to try to understand why you get so reactive to those situations or subjects. Here are a few examples and what it could mean for a person. Trigger, I get so offended when people accuse me of being selfish or self-centered. Internal reality, I tend to feel like others have it better than me. Therefore, I feel like I don't get what I deserve, and when I focus on my needs, it's because I want what others have. Trigger, I get so annoyed when someone talks about women's rights, I just can't stand it. Internal reality, I feel like it's always been about a woman in my life. When are we going to realize that I am important too, and I deserve what others also deserve? Trigger, my partner tells me that I don't give him enough attention and that he feels lonely when we are together. Internal reality, that makes me so angry because I need my time alone too and he doesn't give me any space, we are always together. I try to ignore him and have my space, but that doesn't work either. Trigger, I can't talk about politics, the current situation makes me so mad. Internal reality, the current political situation is bringing up some deep wounds from past experiences I haven't dealt with in my life. Now your turn, what triggers you, and when you explore this more profoundly, what does it say about your internal reality? Being the best version of yourself means that you are taming the shadows that have been following you, sometimes for years. It's not always easy, but when you face your dark side, you bring it to light and immediately allow yourself to shine brighter than ever. It gives you the space to heal deep wounds. Taking responsibility for your own happiness starts by recognizing your responsibility in your life and stop giving your powers to others. When you blame others, you do not own your responsibility in your life. For example, if you continuously blame external factors for the life that you live, you are giving up your powers and will to others. You are allowing others to dictate your behavior and mindset. By doing so, you are entirely detaching yourself from yourself and merely becoming a pion in life. If you want to be yourself, you have to take ownership of your life. Start by being aware when you blame others for the situation you are in and shift your mindset to solution finding and own the solution that will get you out of a difficult situation. It's time for you to take back your powers and choose to live the life that you want. When you can maintain a healthy mindset and break the bad habit of reacting to anything, you become more at peace within and better apt to be your best self. In the next chapter, we will explore your limiting beliefs and how you can transform them to be more empowering. Those limiting beliefs are often connected to deep wounds from the past that we carry with us for years. The feeling of being offended is a warning indicator that is showing you where to look within yourself for unresolved issues.